Okay, um, my message is that um, we have a civil democratic movement uh, going on here for the past uh, 73 years, uh, which has ebbed and flowed um, over the decades. But the momentum that has been generated since uh, India's seemingly unilateral action to downgrade the status of Jammu and Kashmir and bifurcate it into two union territories, one being Ladakh without an assembly and uh, having Jammu and Kashmir um, as a union territory with retaining its assembly. This has created shockwaves throughout the world and we've seen unprecedented, unprecedented protests throughout the Western world and beyond. And um, if we were to uh, focus on England uh, or Britain, we would see that there is no such day where um, somebody somewhere outside some university, outside a local council building, <laughs> in a prominent public square somewhere in any given town in England, Birmingham, Bradford, Luton, London, etc. You will find that our people are very much focused and engaged on this matter. And uh, when you have something consistently going on on the ground here, just like JKLF has um, taken the initiative to conduct this very long march all the way from Bimber to uh, Muzaffarabad, uh, this has added impetus to the momentum that's already been generated. So my um, request to the UN is to take this uh, in a very so my um, request to the UN is to take this uh, in a very uh, thoughtful manner and uh, to understand that our people have evolved to the extent that we are not trying to provoke um, anybody. We are not trying to provoke uh, either the Pakistani army or the Indian army. What we are trying to do is that we are trying to make clear our intention to peacefully exercise our right to move within our territory. And uh, as uh, the JKLF's um, uh, team uh, committee has made it very clear to the local administration here in the discussions, discussions yesterday that we would like a representative of the UN Security General to visit uh, this uh, sit-in protest. And we would also like uh, representatives of the five permanent members of the UN to send their representatives from their high commissions or consulates here in Islamabad also, so that we can have a thoughtful, uh, meaningful discussion about how we can proceed forward and um, how we can prevent, the people of this territory um, can prevent the permanent division of this territory and how the people of this territory can attain their basic rights, which they've been deprived of since 1947. Some words for people of Jammu and Kashmir. Well, um, I would like to say to my um, co-citizens, my compatriots living in any part of the Kashmir Valley or Jammu or Ladakh, that um, we um, wish to follow your sentiment, whatever is the sentiment. For people of Jammu and Kashmir. Well, um, I would like to say to my um, co-citizens, my compatriots living in any part of the Kashmir Valley or Jammu or Ladakh, that um, we um, wish to follow your sentiment. Whatever is the sentiment of the public in Kashmir Valley, we are with that sentiment. And we would like to help you in whatever manner is possible, whether through engagement with international media, whether through engagement with international institutions, whether it's um, any kind of relief or rehabilitation. We wish to come to your aid. We wish to uh, not only uh, profess our solidarity, but we wish to m make a meaningful contribution to erasing the distress that you are going through. And uh, I would say also to my uh, Hindu uh, and Sikh brethren and Buddhist brethren that look, uh, we, are, we apologize that for most of these 73, 73 years, we've, um, you know, focused on trying to look at the rights of the Muslims, whereas we should have looked at things from a human rights angle. And we apologize for that. Uh, the majority of this territory is Muslim, and uh, we do not wish to use that or abuse that uh, status by denying those rights to our Hindu or Sikh or Buddhist uh, co-citizens. So please respect uh, our wishes and we will also ensure that we will respect your wishes too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.